First of all, I want to start off by letting you know that you can do this. There's stuff you can do. I know it probably seems overwhelming. You may have a million things going on in your mind. You want to make it the very best event that you possibly can. And I'm just here to tell you that you can do it. Um, I have been planning events since I was 14 years old. Successful events at that. Since I was 14 years old, it is a passion of mine and I'm so happy that I get to share it with you. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications. And let's go ahead and get started. Here are 10 easy steps to planning your own wedding. Whether you're planning a wedding for yourself or someone else, there are 10 easy steps for you to follow. I'm here to make this as simple as possible. My background was in education. I was a teacher, so I really know how to break things down into simpler, bite-sized pieces. The very first step in planning any event, but especially a wedding, is starting with your budget. You need to have your budget down from the very beginning. This is really important because you needed to decide on how big your party is, on how much you wanna spend on food, on the venue, on the photographer, so on and so forth. The list is down in the description box below of the different vendors and things that you're gonna to have to spend money on. One of the best ways for me to start working on my budget is to consider about how many people are going to be in attendance and I work on a per person rate. I do this for every single one of my events. For weddings, you're looking at around 150 and up per person. Now this is not a number to determine how much a person will consume while they're at your event, but you just want a general idea of how much you will spend per person. So for example, if you're thinking about having a smaller, more intimate wedding, only inviting about 50 people, then your budget should start at around $7,500 whenever it comes to a wedding. I talk a little bit more about what this budget would look like for something like a party or a wedding shower or even a baby shower. But for a wedding, you kind of want to be in the range of $150. I also want to note that elopements are totally different. I will create an elopement video as well that will break down the budget whenever it comes to elopement. Anytime you create a budget, you want to make sure that you stay within that budget. This could remove so much headache moving forward. Whenever you allocate your money, that means divvying out your money to the different buckets when it comes to the vendors, when it comes to the venue, and when it comes to little things that you're wanting to do within your wedding, you want to make sure that you stay within that budget and try to have that money set to the side ready to go. Another thing that I like to have my couples do is to decide on the wiggle room. Whenever I think about the wiggle room, I try to start with my budget on the per person rate and I always ask them, would it be okay if you happen to go over a thousand dollars or would it be okay if you happen to go over fifteen hundred dollars i know that that number sounds like a lot but you can make your wiggle room whatever you want it to be you never know when little things come up and you never know what you may have forgotten i went to a venue with a bride and she decided to tack on an additional five hundred dollars because she really wanted that photo booth she had gone to weddings in the past and she was not leaving until she had a photo booth so we added that for her and her wiggle room was around a thousand dollars so it was perfect for her. Step two is to work on your guest list. Now with the budget, you do kind of have to decide about how many people you're inviting to your wedding. However, whenever you get to the guest list, this is where you're writing down the names, you're getting all of the addresses and phone numbers so that you can send out to save the dates. This also includes anyone you'd like to have in your wedding party. You also should decide if you're going to allow your guests to bring a plus one or sometimes even a plus two. Are children invited? Is this an adults only affair? Your guest list and your wedding party size will all be a factor whenever it comes to the venue that you choose. I would actually even put this step first if you want so that it can inform your budget. Or you can work with a rough number like most of the couples do. Step three, and this is a big step that really gets the ball rolling. It's time to secure your date and your venue. Whenever you're trying to secure your date, keep in mind peak times. That's when a lot of venues will have an upcharge that's tacked on to the regular fee. This tends to happen during the spring and the summer months. Then again, there are lots of venues that don't add an additional fee because of the volume of weddings that they typically have. Another thing you'd like to consider is how far away the venue will be from the place where you'll have your ceremony. Lots of couples get married in churches. Some couples also get married on a family member's property. And you want to consider that commute that your caravan will have to take from the ceremony space to the venue space. Now, if you're getting married in the same place, that's even better. You can just base that off of where you want your dream location to be. Once you have your date set, typically everything else will fall into place. You're pretty much over halfway there. 
Step four would be to hire a day of coordinator or a wedding planner. Don't let anyone tell you that it's a waste of money. Even I, as an event planner, had a day of coordinator on my wedding day because I knew that I could not be everywhere at once. You're spending a lot of money on this day and you wanna be able to enjoy this day. So please hire a professional that'll help you and your wedding party get exactly where they need to go and who'll be there to help your vendors get where they need to go and to get there on time. If you're looking for a day of coordinator, you can click the link in the description box below I have plenty of resources and typically day of coordinators are a fraction of the cost for a traditional wedding planner. Another thing I'd like to note is not asking your bridesmaids, maid of honor, or matron of honor to also be your day of coordinator. They typically will have done a lot for your wedding in order to prepare you for your big day and to ask them to also be on the sidelines and be the logistical team member on your wedding day is really not fair. They also want to enjoy the day with you and I'm pretty sure you want to enjoy the day with them too. Same a little from your budget to hire a day of coordinator or a wedding planner. Step five will be your design and style. This is typically the fun part for any crafty or creative bride. Now, if this is not your forte, I have quick and easy ways for you to get through this as well. I cannot recommend Pinterest enough. Pinterest is an app that is tried and true. I use it for everything as it comes to style and design. There are millions of ideas that have already been posted by other professionals and you can use those ideas to help inspire you for your big day. One of the main things that I like to do anytime that I'm planning a party, whether it's my party or for someone else, I always create an inspiration pin board and I pin everything that I'm, I'm feeling interested in. Or if I'm working with a couple or with another person, I pin everything that I feel like they'd be interested in. And I use that to showcase what their event would look like. Another thing that you could do is create a mood board. A digital mood board is an easy way to put all of your ideas on one sheet so that you can see everything come all the way together. Here's an example that I'm linking right here. Notice that we have the color scheme in place. We also have the style of dresses. We have the general mood of the event. These mood boards can be used whenever you're talking with a coordinator. You can also use these mood boards if you're getting custom invitations, when you are meeting with a photographer. You can have different mood boards for different things. And if you need help with creating one, you can always look at example mood boards on Pinterest. Step six would be to send out your save the dates. Save the dates typically go out no earlier than one year before your wedding day. And they typically don't go out any later than about three months before your wedding day. It really depends on how soon or how long your engagement is. One thing to consider with the save the dates is how you would like to send these out. You can either send them out in the mail in a traditional way on paper. I've also seen magnet save the dates. I've also seen digital save the dates as well. You can also use a website called Paperless Post and many other that are just like it where you can send out the save the dates digitally and you also get a receipt letting you know when the person has opened your save the date. For the save the dates, you typically use your engagement photos, but if you want yours low key like I did, you can send out a photo that you and your partner took and I think that that gives like an extra little touch of uniqueness and personalization whenever you're communicating with your family. Step seven, and you can move this to anywhere you want within the steps, but this is to invite your wedding party to be a part of your big day in a meaningful way. As I mentioned earlier, bridesmaids, groomsmen, groomsmaids, bridesmen, they really want to be a part of your day and they want to contribute in the very best way possible. And I think that inviting them into that role instead of telling them that they're going to be in that role is the best way to do it. I've seen many ways that people have requested that their wedding party participate. Also at this point, you want to get their input on the style of dresses and tucks or whatever it is that they're going to be wearing on your wedding day. Keep in mind that this is an outfit that a lot of them will only wear just once. Speaking of bridesmaids dresses that will only be worn once and all things wedding, check out my Amazon storefront that is updated weekly. It's in the description box below. So getting their buy-in and their input on it will make the process a lot smoother and you'll make your wedding party really feel like you want them included in your big day. Now, if this is not something that you're interested in that is okay too. I think sharing the goal and the mood for your wedding is another way to include them as well and you can always ask them if they have any questions about it 
or if you want your matron of honor or your maid of honor or if you want your best man or your best woman to wear something different this will be a good time to ask them as well step eight will be to start hiring your vendors some venues are all inclusive and they really come with everything you need except maybe a few things like the videographer or the cake but if you're deciding to go with a venue that doesn't offer those things step eight will be when it's time to do that again i have different vendors linked below but i'll also mention them here the most important vendors that you want to secure at the earliest convenience will be the catering the dj and the officiant anytime someone goes to a wedding they remember how much they ate and how much they danced. So you wanna make sure you have those vendors secure at the earliest possible convenience. And when it comes to an officiant, if you're not officiated by an ordained officiant, I'm sorry, but in a lot of states, you're not considered married. So you wanna make sure that you get one of those booked as well. I also know of a few brides who've asked their friends to become ordained ministers so that they could officiate the wedding. It really doesn't take much. It's a certificate and I think it's a little test that's involved in it as well. So if you have someone in mind who you want to officiate your wedding, you can get them ordained and they can marry you and your partner. Some couples also budget for an MC. This would be the person to keep your wedding hype. If you do decide to go with an MC, See, make sure that you read the reviews. You don't want someone who will be a complete buzzkill. You want someone who will be on time and who won't drink too much, if at all, at your wedding. They are a ton of fun if you choose the right one. Step nine would be to schedule all of your pre and post events. Your pre-events would include your bachelorette or bachelor party if you choose to have one, the rehearsal dinner, and the wedding shower. Post-events would be things like the morning after breakfast if you do decide to do something like that. But if you're having a destination wedding or a wedding that's somewhere where your family will be away from their home base and away from other people that they may know, you may want to invite them for one last meal before they head home. Step 10, and this is the final step in planning your own wedding, is to create a wedding website. A lot of your guests will want to know exactly where to go, what to do, where to find accommodations, they also want to know your love story, if you have a registry, see photos of your engagement, so on and so forth. And all of that can be found on your wedding website. If their save the dates or their invitations get lost, it'll be an easy way for them to find exactly where to go and what to do. I know I've had to use one myself a couple times. There is a full wedding checklist below, but these are the main buckets or categories that you'll need in order to plan your wedding. Whatever you do, don't forget to have fun. Congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Whether you're planning a wedding for yourself or for someone else, this is supposed to be one of the very best days of your life and I hope that you enjoy the moments leading up to that. Make sure that you support each other in the comments. I'll also be checking comments and responding to them as well. Let me know what you would like for me to cover next. And if you wish, comment the wedding date below. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy you're here and I'm so happy that I get to share these tips with you. Again, give this video a thumbs up. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.